Here we are on the fifth Sunday of, of Lent. Some people have uh, mentioned to me that, to be real upfront with you, that the ocean noise was too loud and they had a hard time hearing it. And some people have suggested I get a mic. Well, I, I, I didn't do that yet. Um, I want to thank you for gathering together with us here today. We're trying a little bit different. We're right on the river, kind of tucked away in a cove because we kept on getting interrupted. But what we are is here to sort of get to know the Lord better, to get to be together in a way that, uh, well, makes us become the people that we're called to be. So let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the fact that you're with us. I thank you that as we prepare for Easter, for the resurrection, that we know that we have to die to ourselves, that we have to somehow go through that process of getting rid of the garbage in ourselves and letting it go. Sometimes we ask you to take things from us, but we hold so tight to it, you say, I guess you're not ready yet. So Lord, this day, help us to let go of the things that keep us from growing in you. Help us to let go of the things that distract us from the fullness of life. Help us to let go of the things that get in the way of us serving you to the full extent of what you've called us to serve. So, Father, be with us now as we are transformed in this process by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's in your name we pray. Amen. The Gospel for today, on this fifth Sunday of Lent, comes from the Gospel of John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner to him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume, made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I've been now three months retired. I don't really even know what that means yet, but uh, I have been three months retired. And, and I start looking at things differently. People have said that I sound a lot more relaxed I don't know if that's true or not. I, you know, it's hard for me to let go of my compulsiveness. You that know me know my personality well. I mean, I'm my own worst enemy many of the times. But it's been an interesting evolution. And the way I look at things now compared to the way I looked at things even three months ago is different. I was laughing at myself the other day because one of the things I've always done in our household, if Sally cooks, to tell you the truth, I clean up. But one of the things that's most difficult about cleaning up after somebody else cooks is the food that's left over, the leftovers, finding the right size Tupperware container to put it in. I find myself having great joy the other day as there was rice left over. And as I went up, not only did I find the exact right container with a lid, but it fit perfectly the amount of rice that was left over. It just slid right in. It was like somehow kismet. There I was. You know, it's funny. Was I interested more in getting the right container? Or was I interested more in trying to store up the food that was left? I tell that analogy as we enter this gospel reading today. This gospel in John chapter 12 is very similar to a gospel in Luke chapter 10. The only difference is, is that in chapter 10, it's not Judas who sort of argues with Jesus about Mary's behavior. It's Martha, her sister, who argues about Mary's behavior. Here, in the story that we have today, it's Judas who comes. Jesus is having dinner with him. It's 
right before the Passover. They're on their way to Jerusalem. Jesus knows what he's going into. And, and as he is moving towards, you know, being prepared to know that he's going to be arrested and know that he's going to die, die so that, well, so that we can live. But taking on, in a sense, all our brokenness so that, in a sense, we can have all of his wholeness. That he's sitting at dinner. Lazarus, who's already been raised from the dead, and who we're told in other parts of the scripture that the Pharisees, they want to kill him too because he's causing problems just by being alive. But here he is having dinner with all the people that are really closest to him. The people that are maybe not blood, but they are one in spirit. And as they're having dinner, all of a sudden Mary comes up. Mary, the younger sister of Martha and, and Lazarus, comes in and it says that she has pure nard, that she begins to anoint Jesus' feet and then wipe it with her hair. I'll never forget when I first committed my life to the Lord, which, by the way, was, you know, over 40 years ago, just this past March 26. I'll never forget soon after I made you know, that commitment to Christ being in a Bible study with the guy that led me, George, and he said, how sensuous could that be? That here's this man and, and this woman come up, anoints his feet with basically oil and then wipes it with her hair. You know, he goes, I wonder if I would have been able to keep my mind on things. But Jesus seems to keep her mind, his mind on things and he understands exactly what Mary's doing. It might be sensual, but it's not meant sexual. It's meant to simply be adoring and loving. I wonder too, if the norm is left over from what they thought they'd need from Lazarus, considering that he died and then he was risen. I wonder where it came from. Was it really set aside for Jesus, or was it just simply, you know, part of what they had in the house because they had just gone through the experience of a loss and then a gain again? But be that as it may, what happens is in this story, as in the story in Luke, with the discussion with Martha in Luke, but here Judas, Jesus, after being questioned, why is she doing this? He says very clearly, she's chosen the good part. She's doing what she should be doing. When I heard that, once again, one of the things that struck me is there's an old saying that says, you gotta know what time it is in your own life. What time is it in your life? I mean, I'm 72 years old. I can't do things exactly as I did when I was 32 years old, or 42, 52, 62, at 72. And so I've got to know what I can do. It doesn't mean that I can't do those things that I did in the past, but it means I have to do them differently. What time is it in your own life? How do you measure yourself and where you are? But there's also a saying, not just time it is in your life, what time is it in life? You know, some of us have a hard time understanding that. Because we think it's all about us. We think it's all about us. In other words, I'm there, I have to do something, I have to be draw attention to myself. I have to do something here. Mary did not do that. She didn't do what she did because she was trying to draw attention to herself. She did what she did because she just loved Jesus and she wanted to be with Jesus and be close to Jesus. And Jesus says very clearly, she's chosen the better part. You always have me with you. She wants to be with me. You see, Judas didn't really necessarily want to be with Jesus. Martha, she was busy doing, preparing, getting the whole things together. You know, making the proper dinner. Let's get it done. I wonder how many of us are like that. We're more doers than beers. We're more interested in, in a sense, the container than the contents of the container. I wonder how many of us are people who, you know, 
aren't comfortable in our own skin sometimes when we're in a place where we should just simply maybe be quiet and listen. But we feel like we have to say something because we feel like we have to draw attention to ourselves. You see, God doesn't need us to draw attention to ourselves. God's already interested in us. Do you realize that? Do you realize that? That the Lord is always interested in you and he wants you to be at peace within yourself and know what time it is in your own life and know what time it is in life. In other words, he wants you to operate from the perspective of not performing, but rather responding to what's going on around. You know, most of us have our own agendas. I mean, we go into a situation and even if it's not even our own social setting, even if it's not our own job we sort of measure up you know how this should be you know maybe we don't call ourselves judgmental but we sure do evaluate real hard how come they aren't operating the way we want them to operate? how come they aren't giving us sort of the stroking that we are supposed to stroke maybe they aren't supposed to be stroking us maybe we're supposed to be giving to them you see we're containers but if we're only filled with ourselves, then we remain being interested in what we are as a container rather than in what's filling us. And what Jesus calls us to be is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, patience, joy, to be filled with it and give it away. Because as we give that away, all of a sudden, we do let go of ourselves. We die to ourselves so that we can be res resurrected within ourselves into the new creation. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians, Therefore the old is gone, the new has come. But most of us, well, we want the new, but we also want to retain the old. Uh, you know, I'll put it in storage or something. You know, But we've got to let go of that so that the new can come. So that the new person that God has lifted up within you can become the real you. And you know that you are the new person and you serve in that way as a new person, not to perform for God's love, but rather to respond because you know that the grace of God, the love of God has so filled you. On this, you know, fifth Sunday of Lent, do you know that God has filled you? Do you realize, as A.W. Tozer once said, he said, it's not so much what you do that makes things holy. It's why you do them. Why you do them. You, them, you do and serve because you just want to express the love to God. Because then it doesn't matter how the other person responds if you're doing it to serve God through the other person, even if they don't get it. Now, I'm telling you right now, I guarantee the rice that I put in that container doesn't have any cognitive skills. Has nothing that can bless me or not bless me. And yet, I know when I do something that God has blessed me and I look to what's filling me as a container that all of a sudden I'm led by the Spirit to minister to God through them even if they don't get it. It's a fifth Sunday. Next week we go into Palm Sunday. The triumphal entry. The triumphal entry. What are you going to bring to that triumphal entry? Are you going to be carrying the same stuff that you have this week and you're going to bring it into the triumphal entry? You really don't need it. You know, the worries, the anxieties, the burdens, the brokenness. You think you can set that down today? So that you can be filled up not with that anxiety and that worry because to tell you the truth, that's taking up space that wants to be filled with the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. 
And so fill yourself up with the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of Spirit, so that you can let go of the anxieties and the worries of this day, the fears that we so operate on. But you've got to be able to give up your fears, which, to tell you the truth, probably are things that have been with you for more years than the peace of God. The peace of God's been knocking on the door, but you're probably more, in a sense, familiar with those fears. Maybe it's time to let go of them. Let go of them and be filled with grace. Be filled with love. Be filled with the Spirit. And serve God in a new way, in a more powerful way. In a way where when you sit at table with Jesus, which you will, he looks and he said, you really did choose the better part. You got it. You got it. And you didn't wait to come and be with me in the fullness of the kingdom. You chose it while you were in the kingdom that belongs to me on this earth. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.